Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Sabrina and I would love it so much if you would subscribe. Today we're going to be talking about my labor and delivery story. I did make a full video on this, but I felt like there was a lot of things that I wanted to clarify and talk about. Some of this may be repeat information if you've seen that video. If you haven't, please go watch it. I think it's so special. Maybe it's because it's my birth vlog, but I do think it's really special and I'm really glad that we were able to film those moments. I do have little baby Gideon here, so if you hear any weird noises coming from my side of the camera, um, it's just because he's, that's one of them, yeah. Um, it's just because he's hanging out here with me while I film. So um, let's go ahead and get into this because I feel like it's going to be kind of a lengthy. Okay, so for those of you who saw my birth vlog, you would know that we had an induction. The induction kind of came as a surprise, but not really. So I, when I was 36 weeks, I went to my high risk doctor and I had met with her. We had already been monitoring my liver enzymes because I had mentioned a few weeks prior that I was itching really, really bad. I mentioned this to my regular OBGYN and they told me that it was normal. I thought maybe I had dry skin, so I kind of let it go. But then when I met with my high risk doctor, she said, is there anything that you have any questions about? So I did bring it up to her again, which I'm glad that I did because she did a full blood like workup and found out that my liver elevation or my liver enzymes were elevated and she said that could mean one of two things both of which were not good and both of which were things that I had been thinking I had which I ended up having both of them they were coleostasic which is your liver enzymes being elevated and it causes extreme itching or preeclampsia which has to do with your blood pressure um, I had been monitored for preeclampsia up, up until this point so both of which I was like okay this is probably what it is I probably have them so my high risk doctor suggested that um, because I was having so many complications that I would need to be induced earlier than the 39 weeks that we had originally talked about. I ended up in labor and delivery and I had mentioned that my liver enzymes had been elevated previously. They redid my blood work and my enzyme levels had came down. They were still elevated but they weren't to the point where they were concerning. So I thought maybe it was just a fluke, maybe whatever causes your liver enzymes to go up it happened and then it fixed itself. So I had that blood work done on Wednesday. On Friday, my doctor calls me and says, hey, your enzyme levels have went up again. They're not too concerning, but they have elevated. So I'm gonna need you to go on Monday morning early and I need you to redo this blood work. If they come back elevated, we're taking you in for induction that night. So I need you to go in early Monday morning. Well, Monday we were trying to buy a car. So we, I went super early on Monday morning to get this blood work done. We went and we bought the car. Buying a car takes a lot of process. And seriously, as soon as we were ending the paperwork, I got a call from my doctor saying that my liver enzymes had elevated. I get the report online, I looked and my liver enzymes had tripled. So I came in that night, I had no idea what I was doing. I came in, I'm like, hey, I'm here for an induction. They got me and they got things started. And I don't remember what happened that night. They were just, they started with my vitals. And when I got there, my blood pressure was extremely high, which my blood pressure had been high the majority of my pregnancy anyway. I had high blood pressure coming into pregnancy. It kind of leveled itself out at the beginning of pregnancy and then it was an issue from about week 20 on. Um, I had been monitoring my blood pressure at home. That's why I was in labor and delivery so much because my blood pressure was getting high and high, was getting higher and higher. And they told me not to worry unless the top number was over 160 or the bottom number was over 110. I don't know what I was the night that I went to get induced, but they said, we're starting on magnesium. If you guys have ever been on magnesium or ever known someone on magnesium, it's terrible. I hated it. Basically what it does is it slows down your whole system because um, it prevents you from having a stroke basically. And so they started me on magnesium, they were doing my blood pressure checks frequently, and it still was not coming down. So they were constantly giving me blood pressure medicine through my IVs um, and the magnesium, all that stuff. So they started the induction process. I had read a lot online that the induction was extremely painful and it was extremely long. Now this was my first child, my first time ever going into labor, so I don't have anything to base it off of, but what I will tell you is that my labor and delivery experience was extremely quick and it wasn't all that painful. I am paralyzed from my waist down, so maybe that plays some roles in it. I feel like my labor and delivery vlog does a better job at explaining things as they happen because things are kind of a blur for me because of that magnesium. I don't really remember a lot of the things and I wish that I would have filmed more, but I was kind of out of it and just trying to sleep. I started getting induced 
Monday night around like 9 30 p.m. and I had my baby like 24 hours later so that's how quick it happened for me. I was diagnosed with preeclampsia and ICP that day that I got induced so those were both new diagnoses to me that day and I had already been dealing with gestational diabetes, um, chronic UTIs, just overall being a high pregnancy, high risk pregnancy because of my injury which is why I was at the high risk doctor to begin with and I'm very thankful that I was at the high risk doctor. The reason I delivered with a high risk doctor as opposed to my regular OBGYN was because of my spinal cord injury. They were concerned that I would have something called autonomic dysreflexia, which has to do with your blood pressure, I'm pretty sure. And um, they didn't want something to happen and them not be prepared, which I'm kind of glad now in hindsight 2020 because um, our little man was in the ICU for a while and if we would have been at our regular home hospital He would have been flown to another hospital and I would have been separated from my partner Which would have been super traumatic for the both of us. So Everything works out the way that it's supposed to and I'm really glad that that's how it worked out So I do want to reiterate like I've said before after I started the magnesium things get really blurry and really confusing But I'm thankful because I have the vlog that I filmed to kind of remind me of a lot of things And I also had a really really amazing nurse her name was Rachel And I've talked about her literally on every platform that I had because she made the experience amazing She was there the night that we got induced and then she came back the next night whenever we delivered Gideon and she helped me deliver my son and she was just really awesome the thing that I liked about this hospital that they did is they did one-on-one -on -one nursing so so Rachel we were her only patients so she got to spend a lot of time in there talking with us um, she she was just really great and I really liked that that hospital did that for us um, because it was COVID I was kind of nervous about how labor was going to look with that um, I had always had envisions of what I thought my labor would look like. I always wanted to have my partner there with me and my sister, but I thought I wasn't allowed to have more than one visitor. I didn't ask, I just assumed among getting there, I found out that I could have two visitors. So I texted my sister and she ended up coming and spending the majority of Tuesday, which was the day he was born with us. She was able to see me go through most of the labor process. Um, she saw them break my water. She left in about two hours, I think later, Gideon was born, but she had to leave because we live about three hours away from where I was delivering. Well, she does, I didn't. And she needed to be home because the weather was starting to get bad. It snowed a lot the night he was born. So she missed him being born, which I would have loved for her to be there, but it just didn't work out. But I'm still thankful that she was there for the majority of the laboring process because she's my best friend and I'm just really glad that she was there. I have some pictures of us together when I was in labor and those are just really special to me. I knew going into this that I wanted to have an epidural. I wasn't sure what I was going to be able to feel with my spinal cord injury, but I knew that if I were feeling anything, I knew that I was going to want to take pain medicine. God made pain medicine for a reason. I know that my body was designed to do this, but I was not going to be shy about getting the pain medicine. I held off though for a while like contractions they hurt I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna say it's not painful it is but I held off until seven centimeters and the only reason that I got the epidural when I did I think I would have waited longer and not I, I think I think I would have waited longer the only reason I did get it when I did is because they were so consistent that I wasn't getting time in between and it was just becoming to the point where I wasn't recovering and that's when I start to really not be able to handle the pain I can handle pain I have a pretty high pain tolerance but when I don't get time to bounce back from it obviously that's when I'm done so Getting the epidural, I was so nervous, you guys. I had asked for it, and it felt pretty quick that they gave it to me. They said that they were sending in their best lady, and I really do think they did, because my epidural was not painful at all. When I went to sit up to get the, get the epidural, I felt an extreme amount of pressure down in my, like, vagina, my lady bits, and I had told them, like, this is really, really painful. I'm gonna have to go slow. So they worked with me to get me on the edge of the bed. As soon as I get to the edge of the bed, they're like, be still. And of course, I have a contraction. I'm pretty sure that's the only time I ever remember cursing during labor because my contractions were so painful at that point and I couldn't, like, I was put, like, bearing down on it. I couldn't get comfortable. Um, but of course, Rachel was there being the sweet little angel that she was, helping me through it. Getting the epidural, was not painful like I saw a Twitter video of an epidural needle and it's huge and I'm like am I just really tough or do I do they numb me up good they numb you up I got the epidural but 
so I was checked right before I got the epidural. They gave me the epidural and then I lay back down and within like five minutes another doctor comes in and she checks me and she said, she's at a 10 and I think if I understand correctly, Gideon was already making his way down the birth canal. I don't know what that's called. He was already making his way down to come out. Like they could feel him. So she's like, we have to deliver her now. And that's whenever they started getting everyone to come in um, because I delivered in my room. And they had the NICU come in for my delivery and I didn't find this out until later because everything happened so quickly and I was on that medicine. The reason that they had NICU come in, because my baby was sent to the NICU, I know I said that and I'll probably tell you again in a second, is because if you have magnesium, they automatically call the NICU in. I feel like they need to have something else that is better for mama and baby than magnesium. I'm not a doctor, I don't know what that looks like, but I know that a lot of people have had the same experience that I had with magnesium. I was terrified up until this point because I was so scared of what it was going to feel like having my baby come out. One of the things that I really wanted though was I wanted to be able to see him. I wanted to see him crowning out. If I could feel, I wanted to feel, but I wanted to see the experience, like see him coming out so that I could experience that. And I'm so thankful that my doctors listened to me. They did get him near and I was able to see. If you listen, maybe I'll find the clip and I'll put it in here so you can see. But they do say, look, there's his head. Do you see his head? And at first I didn't recognize what I was looking at because I it didn't make sense, but then I did. I saw his head and that is forever ingrained in my mind and it is so special to me some of you may think it's weird but it's so special to me and shortly after that I think like one or two pushes later he was born can you see him there he is that's him you don't have to push if you're not contracting you can relax he's okay it's a lot of pressure it's a lot I was getting so frustrated pushing though because it was like I would push and his head would come out and then I would stop pushing and it would go back in. And I know that's totally normal, but I was like, just get this baby out. So his head is going in and out, in and out, in and out, right? Not too much in. It's going a normal amount out. So I didn't feel like the ring of fire or anything like that. And I think I couldn't feel it because I'm paralyzed, but I also had an epidural. I don't even think my epidural worked because it was seriously within like 10 minutes of getting the epidural, I started pushing. Uh, I think that it obviously kicked in during the process because delivering wasn't a quick process. They told me that it was, I did really well for a first time mom and it felt really quick to me, but I think I pushed for maybe like 45 minutes to an hour. Like I didn't push solid through that. I think Jacob said there was like 11 pushes that I did. I don't know, I didn't count. But I didn't feel that, but pushing him out felt like I had to take the world's largest poop. It was like a, a sharp pain like I have IBS and it's kind of it felt like I was having flare-up of IBS and once he came out I felt so much relief but then that's when things started to take a turn for the worst I would say up until this point I had a really really amazing labor I had a really ex great experience like it wasn't as painful as I thought it was going to be I just really felt incredible and like so proud of my body and so proud of myself for pushing myself like I'm gonna get emotional for pushing myself to that point and like especially to deliver vaginally that's something that I want to touch on too I did deliver vaginally and I think a lot of people doubted that I could do it because of my paralysis and it was something that I had said from the very very beginning that I wanted to do I wanted to try as hard as I could for a vaginal delivery and not that I think that there's anything wrong with c-sections I just for me personally I didn't want that I worried a lot about recovery with a C-section because I have to use my core muscles so much. Recovery from a C-section is hard anyway. I, I, I never had one, but I know from previous stories, I know that it is super freaking painful. And with me using my core so much, I was really scared of losing my independence on top of having to deal with a newborn. That was my biggest concern, if I'm being honest with you. And I'm very thankful that I had a team of doctors who listened to me and who supported my decision. Every doctor that I talked to, because I did, I did have my regular OBGYN, but the hospital that I delivered at was a teaching hospital. So I, I never really saw the same doctor twice. They all were behind me. And that was really important to be listened to and heard. And because I was delivering at a high risk hospital, I think that they were a little bit more equipped for it. But even at the regular level, they were prepared for me to deliver vaginally. I think some of them doubted me though, but I'm really thankful that I pushed my body that far. 
because I do think that I, I do think that if I didn't have that mindset, I would have chickened out. So once Gideon was born, they wrapped him in a towel and they put him on my stomach and he wasn't making any noise. And it all happened so fast, but I remember thinking, I remember saying like, why isn't he say, like, why isn't he making any noise? Why isn't he crying? And one of the things that I wanted was I wanted immediate skin to skin and they weren't giving me that. Um, they just kind of set him on my stomach, but I didn't actually get skin on skin because he was wrapped in a towel. And so he started to turn purple pretty quickly. And that's when the lady that was holding him said, we have to take him. And they just ripped him away and took him in the corner where his little bed was set up. Nobody had told us anything at this point. And there's people running around everywhere. So they take Gideon away. Jacob is right next to me holding my leg because at this point, I still have to deliver my placenta and be stitched up. So I have doctors working on me down there telling me to push to deliver this placenta. I'm trying to figure out where my son's at and why he's not making a noise because at this point he still hadn't made any noise. I'm talking to Jacob who's trying to eavesdrop on the doctors and finally they say, Dad, you can come look at your baby. But when he went over there to the corner, they pushed him away. And so basically what happened, all the craziness aside, is the magnesium that I was on really, really affected the baby. And so when he was born, he was basically too lazy and didn't want to breathe. And so he wasn't. And so they had to put him on the CPAP machine and intubate him. So I wasn't able to even hold my baby for about a day after he was born. Um, I have pictures of him with the little thing down his throat. It's heartbreaking now, but he only had that, um, he only had that for about, uh, 24 hours and then he was able to get off that but we did stay in the NICU for five days total because at first his breathing was an issue after that technically getting was preemie uh, he was born at 36 and 6 and at 37 they consider you full term so technically he was a preemie and because he was born so early he didn't know how to eat his sugars were really low and because of that they had to prick his little baby feet all the time after he ate um, and they had to make sure that he was staying on top of his feedings and wasn't getting sick because he was throwing up a lot. So every time he would get sick or throw up, that was just another backslide. Um, and then, of course, because of that, all babies lose weight to begin with, but he lost weight. So um, basically, all he had to learn how to do was eat. And we were able to finally get out of there once he hit his birth weight again, which was six pounds and seven ounces. He was a little guy. Um, last time he got weighed, he was almost eight pounds, though. Huh was almost eight pounds yeah I know that I kind of rambled a lot in this I hope that it made sense but because I really wanted to share the story I really had an amazing labor and delivery experience and I would 10,000% do birth again do labor again than to do my pregnancy because my pregnancy was awful but I loved giving birth I felt so empowered and so proud of my body for being able to do those things and it gave me the most amazing little guy in the world so very thankful for that Hope, again this wasn't too much rambling there's a lot going on right now that's distracting me so i apologize but thank you guys so much for watching if you guys haven't seen our labor and delivery vlog please go watch it i will leave it in the i cards above or in the description down below um, thank you for your support i love you guys so much and i will see you in the next one bye <laughs> Very